Uh, Chair notes, members of the committee, my name is Dan Rayfield, State Representative from House District 16. I'm going to uh, walk through just kind of a, a quick presentation. Questions after the end, um, we have Alicia Temple from my office um, who has been um, staffing the work group and she'll be here to answer any questions that the committee has. First off, thank you for having me here today. Um, and I just want to add what a pleasure it is to be back in the Capitol uh, in person testifying before all of you again. I think it's been several years, so it's exciting for me. Um, we we came the best I can, okay. <laughs> You're doing a good job, so far, right? Okay. Um, so we came into 2022 well aware uh, that it would be the year that the United States Supreme Court took up a case to take away 50 years of precedent and the constitutional right to an abortion. Even for those of us who anticipated the pending Supreme Court ruling, the draft opinion from Justice Alito was extremely shocking. As we're seeing around the country, this is a life and death issue uh, for anyone that needs an abortion. We anticipated this day here in Oregon and took significant steps in 2017 by passing the Reproductive Health Equity Act to codify the right to abortion in Oregon. And Oregonians have repeatedly clearly affirmed their support for making abortion and other health care accessible to all. But I want to be clear, the right to access an abortion does not mean abortion is accessible. In response to the leaked draft of the opinion in May, thousands of Oregonians took to the streets to protest. There was a shared understanding that the future of reproductive rights in the country was in jeopardy. We knew we couldn't be complacent here in Oregon while other states were preparing to roll back protections and attempting to criminalize health care access. So less than three weeks after the Dobbs decision was leaked, our office formed the Reproductive Health and Access to Care Work Group. This group developed the recommendations you'll hear more about during this hearing. I want to be clear that I am not, absolutely not, an expert uh, in this space. And I knew we would need to hear directly from patients, providers, and clinics, uh, people on the ground, people who are doing this work and who are receiving the care. Those are the perspectives that will inform these recommendations that will be a guiding light for the work that we take on in the legislature during the upcoming session. How do we do right by patients? How do we do right by providers all across the state? Our job as legislators in this group, myself, Representative Nelson, Representative Valderrama, Senators Lieber and Senator Steiner, was to listen. We had to listen to how the reproductive health care landscape was changing and the needs, how the needs were emerging. Sadly, many of the fears we heard on the day during the, when the Dobbs decision was released have come true. We've heard stories from providers about increasing harassment and threats of violence. To the east, Idaho has put in a law mirroring Senate Bill 8 in Texas, banning abortions and allowing individuals to sue medical providers who perform abortions. This has had a direct impact on Oregonians in the eastern part of the state, and that impact reaches providers, and patients all over Oregon because of longer wait times. And a common theme in the work group is the amount of fear that we've heard from both patients and from providers. I want to reaffirm our commitment to the legislature to doing everything in our collective power to let both patients and providers know we have your back and that this will be the focus of our office in the 2023 session and beyond. These recommendations that you'll hear about are just a starting point. You'll note that there are some existing questions uh, where further analysis is needed before we can even take action. But the fundamental principle guiding us dur during this work is that a person's life has its own unique circumstances, no matter where they live. Someone, any one of us, that, or any, any of us love, may need an abortion someday, and people should have that right, make their own decisions about their own health care. And with that, I will turn this over to the amazing Attorney General Rosenblum, who has been a fantastic partner in this work group, okay. uh, who I believe is online. And there she is. Yeah. 